do you want? Peter Barlow, I'm arresting you on suspicion of the murder of Tina McIntyre. What? You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention, when question, something you later rely on in court. Anything Dad, you do say may be used in evidence. It's all right, Sai. This is a mistake. No! Sai, come Leave on. Him alone. Si, there's nothing we can do. Let's go on. Come on. It's all right, son. It's all right. That was my kid. I'm sorry, the car's waiting. This is ridiculous. I haven't done anything wrong. The penny seems to have dropped at last. <laughs> you, you must be relieved. I've been dreading this. It was inevitable. Oh, and I bet you're really pleased, aren't you? Because it gets our Lady of Underworld off the hook. Carla's innocent. He's guilty. Oh, I just... I can't get my head round him being a killer. I mean, I've lived among murderers. I think I'd know one if I saw one. Well, it's a big thing. It's not something I can decide quickly. You've had loads of time to think about it, babe. Did you not miss me while I was away? Yes, I missed you, like mad. I missed you, no? I mean, I want to move in with you. Yeah. Steve, there's a barrel wants changing, love. Oh, I think so. I do. Oh! Oh, yeah, the barrel. Yeah, the ba uh, barrel needs changing for uh, another barrel. <sighs> Sorry, Daniel Day-Lewis, he is not, OK? We're going to give you two some privacy. Come on. What about the barrel? Just give it up, will you? Oh, look, come on. What are you worried about? Well, there's Jenna, for a start. Oh, look, you know, if you don't love me... I do. I do love you. More than anyone I've ever met, that's the... You've turned my world upside down. In a good way, yeah? Yes, in a good way. Look, I, I just need a bit of time, you know, to readjust. What do you mean? I don't know. I've read it in a magazine or something. <laughs> Look, I'll call the landlord. What, for advice? This stuff needs sorting. If I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it properly. But we are going to do it, eh? Maybe. We'll see. I warned her it would end in tears. I just never thought that... I should have done something about it. What could you have done, love? What could any of us? When Tina's mind was set... <sighs> well, if it was Peter, I hope he never sees the light of day. He's wrecked so many lives. We ought to get started. Is that her bag? I've never done anything like this, so... Come on. <sighs> we'll get through this. This is the last favour we can do for Tina. No, you're a smoker? I'm not. Right now, though, I'm tempted to give it a go. Look, this is none of my business, but, um, if you've got cold feet about moving in with Lloyd... No, no, I've not. Nothing I'd rather do. Well, happy days, then. Yeah. Happy days. Why am I not convinced? Well, it's not just about me and what I want. There's other people to consider. Like your daughter, you mean? Yeah. Like my daughter. I mean, she's never even met Lloyd. If I do this, this is a massive thing to just spring on you. Mm. How old is she? 20. <laughs> like me, aren't you? You didn't hang about. Surprise, was she? Because I know how Ryan was. <laughs> yeah, sort like that. Look, you know what? Kids that age, they're less bothered than you think. I mean, they've got their own lives, haven't they? And you've got yours. I've done your duty. It's your time now. And listen, right? If you really want to make a go of things with Lloyd, then don't let anyone stand in your way. Life's too short. A herd of flipping rhinos couldn't have made more mess. They've got no respect. Mum. There's not a thing in that kitchen where it should be. It feels like a flipping holiday let. Mum, something's happened. Oh, not to your dad. No, no, it's... It's Peter. He's been arrested for Tina's murder. Do you want me to go and phone Dad? No. Uh, no, no, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Um, I'm, I just, um, I'll just finish up here. Um... It's all right, we can do that. No, I'd be happier doing it myself because I'm not going to be able to rest until everything's back where it should be. It's all right, ma'am. It's all right. 
It's not all right. When's it all going to end? He looked me in the eye and he told me he was innocent. That can't have been a lie. So how do you explain the charm being in the outhouse? I can't, because I didn't put it there. I wasn't even living over there at the time. But you would have known Mr and Mrs Barlow left their outhouse unlocked. Yeah, uh, maybe. So what? So you would have known there was somewhere to hide the items you stole from the flat. Somewhere you could easily return to without causing suspicion. Listen, you, you, can, you can concoct all the stories you like, OK? But I didn't do it. But you agree the bracelet must have been in the outhouse at some point? Yeah, it looks that way. A bracelet that has your fingerprints on it? Well, I must have picked it up, you know, when it was lying around the house. Do you know why you might have been handling the bracelet? Well, I've just said. I, you know, I don't recall doing it, but obviously I did. Try to remember, Peter, this is very important. What do you want me to say? But do you, do you want me to make something up? Because that would be the easiest thing in the world to do, but I'm trying to tell you the truth. Or you're not interested in that. The police arrested me. It doesn't mean I did it. True. But if what Rob's saying is right about this missing charm... Yeah, but even today, he swore blind that he'd done nothing. Oh, since when did his word ever count for anything? I know. I know it. But you should see me. He seems so... Oh, I don't know. Show me a spinning with all this. Right, well, don't think about it, then. Just be glad that the police aren't hassling you anymore. Well, what did Rigsby say? Rigsby. Your landlord. Has he given us his blessing? Um. Yeah, he says it's fine that I move out. Which means you'll be moving in. <laughs> yes! Hey, you won't regret it, you know, I promise. Oh, down with your volley. You need to watch that heart of yours. Do you right, I'm not giving you mouth to mouth. Trust me, you won't want it. Listen, guys, this heart's never felt better. Um, he did say that I had to give him a month's notice. He just wants your rent money. You don't have to stay there. You can move in next week. But hang on, slow down. You need to talk to Jenna first. I'll do that tomorrow when she gets back from the mum. So, I mean, there will be no problem. And I need to talk to my daughter, which I'll do when I get home. I can't wait to meet her. You can follow from my place. I mean, our place. <laughs> no, listen, I'm going to go home. If I'm going to be moving in with you, I've got lots of packing to do, right? <sighs> you made your feelings about Miss McIntyre quite plain at the funeral. Yeah. And I regret that. I'm sure you do. She was an inconvenience you wanted rid of. But I've never pretended otherwise, have I? I didn't want her in my life anymore, and I didn't want her to tell Carla about the affair. Guilty as charged. I'm a woman of the world, Peter. I can't imagine your wife's the easiest to live with, so you wanted a bolt hole. But things got out of hand. You needed to shut Tina up any way you could. I tried to reason with her, and she wasn't having it. Come on, look, we've been through all this. You admit you were a blazing row, and then she scratched your face. <laughs> Then, a little while later, you're seen fleeing her flat in a state. A little while after that, she's found half dead. Look, I'm not stupid. I know what it looks like, but when I left that flat, Tina was alive, right? She was alive and kicking. So then what did you do? You know what I did? I went and told Carla everything. Something I'd only do if I thought Tina was going to tell her. So you said, but you didn't go straight to your wife. You were seen entering the ginnel, is that correct? Uh, yeah, I needed a smoke calm my nerves down. Did anyone see you actually in the ginnel? <sighs> no, not that I know of. I, I wasn't there long. You went to your father's outhouse, dropped off the stuff, and went back to the pub. That's what really happened, isn't it, Peter? <sighs> uh, no, it's not. You went back later, grabbed the evidence, but in the dark, in a hurry, you didn't see the top hat charm. And you dropped the bracelet by the gate. No, I didn't. So can someone account for your movements that night? Because we certainly couldn't find you. It's because I went out drinking. I'd had a shot. Come on. Where did you go drinking? I don't know. I can't remember. I was hammered. You can't remember much, can you, Peter? Or maybe you just don't want to. Why are you so convinced it was Peter? <sighs> he was seen coming from her flat. I saw him going down the ginnel, and now evidence has been found in the Barlow's outhouse. Do you want me to join the dots for you? I can manage. But I don't think it's so black and white. You see, in my job, oh, I saw... Oh, look at Rumpole of the Bailey here. You were a clerk, weren't you? Uh, and you 
yourself flaming toughies. I know I'd sooner defend me. It's all right, Mum. All I'm saying is, of itself, this piece of stolen jewellery, it proves nothing. If they found the murder weapon with Peter's prints on it, I might be convinced. Yes, well, the police seem to be, don't they? So that's all that matters. You might have been arrested, but that's not the same as getting charged, is it? Will you give it a rest? It might be entertaining for you lot, but a little boy saw his father getting carted off in handcuffs today. He's sobbing his heart out at home. Sorry, mate. Well, I, I'm not apologising. I had a legitimate interest. Teenet was a former employee and a friend. Then how about showing a bit of respect for her memory? She deserves better than our last gossip, don't you think? The background, the timeline, the physical evidence in the outhouse, it all points one way. Yeah? Well, maybe you've got to work a bit harder then because it's the wrong way. Then give us something to work with. A reason to disregard everything else we've managed to uncover because so far you've not done yourself any favours. That's not a question. You don't have to respond to that. You know what? She, uh... She went a lot to me, Tina. For a while. Everything else crashing down around my ears and... When I was with her, it seemed miles away. Like it was somebody else's problem. Life seemed easy. Until she chose to complicate it. By wanting more. You know, what I'm trying to get across is... You know, no matter how much I wanted Tina out of my life, I, I cared about her. You know, I would never have hurt her, not in that way. I just, I would never have hurt her. For the benefit of the tape, PC Mead has asked to speak to myself and Detective Sergeant Hawthorne. Interview paused at 20.29. Excuse us. <clears throat> You want an haircut? You've been waiting a long time. I assume you sat out here for a reason. Yeah, because I wanted to be alone. Oh, right. I thought you'd be spending time with so She's babysitting. Yeah, but... I know, but the last place that I'm going to be right now is around kids. Oh, right. You had a belly full with your brother, did you? No. I was gutted to have to leave him there, you know? I see. Not great, then. No, it's perfect. It's absolutely everything that I could have ever wanted for him. So what's the problem? Me. As per. Did you kick off? No. Look, when the time came for me to go, Ben didn't want me to. He started getting really upset and begging me to stay. Well, nobody likes goodbyes. He's really happy. You know, they love him and he loves them. And he was in bits when I left. I just I keep confusing him. Oh, I see. No, you don't. I do, actually. I was in the same boat with Faye. She was settled, I came along, messed with her hair, of course, mayhem. No, I can't spoil it for him, I've got to let him go. <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 talk about babies and bathwater. It's hard, but you've just got to find the right balance. But it was different for you and Faye, wasn't it? Because you were just next door. Whereas I keep coming and going and upsetting him. He's lucky to have you. Look, my mind's made up, OK, but just don't tell Sophie. She's going to peck my head. Well, it's your decision. You just don't do anything too hasty, eh? Leanne didn't need me, so I brought you a kebab. I thought you might be hungry. Cheers. Look, I am sorry about the food. I'm just I'm really knackered. Really? Yeah. I hope you put plenty of chilli sauce on this. I'm starting to get worried. Ten more minutes, they said I'd been a smoking ruin. Oh, sorry, I had to work over. What's the occasion? Oh, I'm having my tea with a woman of my dreams. What more excuse do I need? Doing a bottle of wine, chilling. Actually, I love that. I'm really tired. Really? Yeah. I didn't want you too hard at that place here. Let me take your coat. I can do it. Sorry. I've just had one of those days. Hey, it's all right. You sit yourself down. I'll dish up in a sec. 
Got the recipe off the internet. The loving spoonful. <laughs> Classic recipes for romance. <laughs> right. <sighs> oh, it's lovely to be home. Can't tell you. I mean, I love the job, but the thought of this is what keeps me going while I'm away. I'm sorry, love. I'm shattered. I, uh, it's need to get an early night. You got a bad night? Uh, just a bit tense, that's all. Uh, I'll give you a massage if you want to. No, no strings. No. Thanks. I'm just gonna go to sleep. Right, well, I'll, I'll put yours in the fridge then. I'll be up in a bit. Try not to wait. I uh, gather your lady friend is moving in with you. Yeah, I'm just going to neck this and then go home and spruce the place up. Eh, yeah, she's seen it all before. She knows what she's letting herself in for. God help her. Eh, uh, not all blokes are like you, you know. But Lloyd doesn't leave his underpants screwed up on the bathroom floor. Uh, anyway, I was thinking about, you know, getting a couple of plants, a yucca or something. Oh, be careful. You don't want it to look like a dentist's waiting room. Well, a bonsai can be very elegant. So it's, it's amazing what they can do with them. Well, tell me there's a full-size version of you walking around somewhere. Do be careful, or I may take my custom elsewhere. Maybe I'll just stick some flowers in a vase. Yeah. Why don't you go to the whole hog? I think we've got some red carpet knocking around somewhere. I just want the place to look nice for her. Yeah. So stop raining on his parade, you. I just don't want him to go over the top, that's all. I want it to work out for him. Look what happened with Charon and Mundy. He was devastated. Excuse me, I am not the deceased. Things are different this time round. I know where to stand with Andrea. We're going into it with our eyes wide open. Yeah, to shut your pie, all you. I happen to think you make a nice couple. Since when were you cheerleading for Andrea? Not that I wouldn't mind seeing you in the outfit. Not all that pom pom. It's a new name for him. Listen, me and Andrew just got off on the wrong foot, that's all. Largely down to you. Mate, believe me, she's the best thing that's happened to me in a long, long time. Well, I'm very chuffed for you, mate. But just remember, treat them mean, keep them keen. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I have to bear that in mind. I'll put that box for Tina's mother in the post tomorrow. Well, I can do it for you. No, no, you're more than enough. Ah, oh, Tina was my friend as well, you know. You've not got a monopoly. Besides, I've nothing else to do with my time. <laughs> All right, well, that's very good of you. Thank I'll, you. No, I'll drop it off at yours for now, and uh, I'll pick it up uh, in the morning, if that's all right. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Will you have a brew? Oh, well, if you're offering. Uh, but I don't want to keep you up. Oh, I don't think I'll get off to sleep yet. You know, tonight's really brought it home. Parceling up a young girl's jewellery and her clothes and her little keepsakes. Tina is not in her earrings or her <laughs> trinket boxes. She's in the hearts of everyone who loved her. That's where she'd live on. Thank you. You know, I don't know what I'd have done without you the last few weeks. Well, you just need a bit of a hug. And if it weren't for this box... Put the box down. Where's your mum? Oh, she's gone for a kit, bless her. Cheers, babe. Did she say how your dad took it? He was quiet, apparently. Didn't know what to say. Is he coming home? Oh, who knows? He's got a grandson at death's door and a son arrested for murder. I mean, talk about Sophie's choice. <sighs> Poor dad. It'll break him if Peter gets sent down. Oh, and as for Simon, I mean, his life's ruined before it's even begun. This is such a mess. You're getting way ahead of yourself, Trace. They haven't even convicted Peter yet. Yeah, well, you have. I'm only guessing, same as the police. I, I don't know who did it, not for certain. How could I? Where are they? If they're much longer, I'll make some inquiries. So how long are they allowed to hold me for? It depends. Given the nature of the offence, they can detain you without charge for anything up to 96 hours. 96 hours? Sorry about that. If you can sit yourself down, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> 
interview with Peter Barlow resumed at 21.32. Detective Constable Vanner and Detective Sergeant Hawthorne are the interviewing officers. We've been waiting nearly an hour. This is totally unacceptable. We were with forensics. In addition to the missing charm, we also found traces of dried blood in your father's outhouse. These have now been analysed and they match a sample taken from Tina McIntyre. In light of this, do you want to revise or add to anything you've told us so far? No. All right. In addition to the mountain of circumstantial evidence against you, we now have strong reason to believe the murder weapon was concealed in the outhouse at number one Coronation Street, along with goods stolen from Miss McIntyre's flat. Goods that include a bracelet with your fingerprints all over it. So I'll ask you again, Peter. Is there anything else you want to tell us? No. I've told you everything I know. Interview terminated, 21.35. So is that it? No, we need you to accompany us downstairs to the charge desk. What did you say? Are you charging me? We've spoken to CPS, so if you'd like to follow me. No, 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 you, you can't do this. Look, I, I've told you, right? You've, you've got the wrong man. Well, ask your client to comply, please. You need to do as they ask, Peter. Well, you expect me to go calm me downstairs while they put a noose around me neck? No way, no way! You can't do this! You can't do this! Will Andrea tell Lloyd the truth? Hayley Tamadon spills the beans on her love triangle only at itv.com slash Coronation Street. Next, Davina McCall and Nikki Campbell return for an emotional series of long-lost family as a daughter searches for answers from a missing father and a mother hopes to be reunited with a son she's not seen for 41 years.